Hello, everyone. Hope you are well on this Monday night. It's going to be an interesting week, folks. We have a tsunami wave that is about to hit later this week, Thursday and Friday. But it's not a wave of water. It is a wave of humans. And it's not going to just be just one wave. It's going to continue after that first wave. All right. Now, she waited until I started talking. Now she's looking at me. You want to get on camera? You want to? No? She's, she's wagging her tail. I guess she's going to make her bed. So you may hear that in the background. Bear with me. So I'll get into the story. But first, emails. Please be patient if you email me. And I welcome emails. I really do. I love hearing from y'all. Please be patient because I am behind and I'll make every effort to respond as quickly as possible. So bear with me on that. I get inundated with a lot of emails from companies wanting me to sponsor them. I mean, I get multiple daily from them wanting me to do emails about their product or just putting links and my descriptions and all that kind of stuff. And I've just decided right now I'm not going to do anything like that. The best way you can help this channel is to view it, to watch the videos, of course, and like, like them, hit the like button, subscribe, share them with your friends and family. If you believe it can help them, please share it. That's the best way you can, you can help this channel and help us is just really to view it and do those things. Greatly appreciate it. Tsunami wave, y'all. I mean... I'm hearing different numbers before I get to that, but a, a couple of things was just occurring to me yesterday and today, and it's about to get real for real, no doubt about it, this week. I think there's a lot unknown that, we, that we're going to see that we're just not going to expect. I think we're going to see some things that we do expect to see. I believe in general, just talking to people at work, uh, out there in the community, friends, even family, and you probably see this as well, that a lot of people right now are just, they're, they're still very comfortably numb, uh, head in the sand. I mean, they're just happy with their Netflix, sports, movies, various other distractions. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Please understand. However, if, if you're so into that that you're not even aware of what's going on around you, then maybe you should reassess that. Okay. El Paso, Texas. Saw a, a, this, I think it was a Glenn Beck video earlier today, but he was showing some footage, y'all, of El Paso, Texas now, currently, today. Overrun already. Now, this is an American town. Now, this is an American city. Thousands, thousands of people that have streamed across on the curbs. They're four and five deep on the sidewalks, sitting there, sleeping, milling about. It's unreal, y'all. It is un unreal. I don't even see tents. I just see humanity. I just see people. This is an American city. For just blocks and blocks. It's not like one block. It's not just like one little area. It just keeps going and going and going. This dog and I was watching this and I'm like, we were like, wow, just wow. <clears throat> it is said that at least a million are staged in Mexico, ready to come in and getting near the border that are going to be ready to come in later this week, Thursday, Friday. I've heard different numbers. Uh, when this wave hits 10,000 a day, I'm hearing that. I'm also hearing it could be one and a half million the first week. After that, you could see five to 10,000 per day, 400,000 per week after that for the first several months. God help us. God help us. Millions, millions. Now, I'm going to say this, just like I said this yesterday. 
I want to make this just to be clear. I am not against immigration. This is not immigration, though. This is different. I'm, I'm all for legal immigration. My mom was an immigrant. And I know many other immigrants from various countries. And there is a process. It takes a while. It's a pain. But if you really want to come here, there is a way to do it. There's a process to do it. It takes some work, takes some time, it takes some effort. But it's done. I mean, millions have done it. This is how the country was, for the most part, built on immigration. I would welcome a Ellis Island model that we used to have, Ellis Island. You know, I mean, at least check their health, have a name, some kind of background, maybe. I mean, something. An introduction. I mean, I'm, I'm reaching here. And it also, I mean, let's look at this as a humanitarian. I mean, these are on a humanitarian level. This could be a humanitarian crisis, if not already. <clears throat> you have this high number of people coming in. You got smugglers involved. You've got branded families, children. I mean, the journey itself. I, 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 you know, I can't blame them for wanting to get in. Again, there's a process, and the, the, some of the footage I've seen of the long lines. I think it was Brown, Brownsville, Texas. They had this drone coverage of this long line of people walking into into town <clears throat> and i didn't see many families i saw a lot of young men i saw a lot of military aged men single men a lot like a lot lot just saying just saying now when this uh when this hits You know, it's going to require a lot. I mean, once they get in, I mean, services, what, what's going to happen then? That's, you know, I've heard they're going to be, and I believe this, they're going to be dispersed around the country. They're not just going to sit on the border towns. Maybe they will for a little while, but they're going to be all over. They're going to be sent into the interior of the nation. It's going to require services, health care, food, provisions, money. And they're going to be given a lot. Who's paying for that? I wonder who's paying for that. Share your thoughts on that. And I have a concern, especially down near the border. You got landowners, you got ranchers down there. Uh, I'll just picture them laying down and just say, come on in. Uh, you know, I mean, I, so, I, my concern there is something's going, you're going to have a tipping point. They're going to defend their land and their home. Not everybody coming through is uh, has good intentions. Can you imagine? There's going to be a crime, like skyrocket. I think it's bad now. Something's got to give. Somebody's going to defend something. And that's when it could get super ugly really quick. Super ugly. I mean, so uh, now I had a, there was a comment and uh, Scott, uh, one of uh, uh, the subscribers to the channel uh, has been giving us, he lives down in that, near that area. He did uh, give an update today on one of the comments that Governor Abbott, uh, of the governor of Texas, has about 10,000 troopers, the National Guard on notice. And I guess the thought there, they're going to try to help defend the border there. I, I hope it sounds encouraging. I, I don't know if 10,000 is enough. Um, I mean, at least it looks like he's trying to do something there. I don't know. Uh, I don't hear that from other states on the border. Texas is the you know, the big one, you know, I guess one of the big ones. Uh, we have other issues. It's not like this nation has enough issues already. Uh, you know, I, I saw a comment uh, on another post where they made a very good argument that we're already in a depression. And the argument was that the homeless, the increased the explosion of homeless that we are seeing or that we already have before this is coming in. We have record numbers of homeless popping up everywhere. Homeless, unemployed, crime, much more of all of the above, all of that than we had during the Great Recession back in 2008 plus. 
Good point. I tend to agree. And the argument was we are already in a deep, deep recession slash depression. Good point. I mean, really. I'm seeing articles, food pantry lines around the country are stretched longer and longer than they ever have been. Inflation is crushing people. You got food prices that are still going up, still going up. We see it every week. I know y'all do too. Homeless encampments are exploding in size all over the country, not just in California. Uh, you know, not just in L.A. and San Francisco. I've heard Portland, Oregon, man, is just, I've heard that's just a nightmare right now. But it's all over. It's not just, it's in Kansas. It's in Wichita. It's in Utah. It's in the center of the country. It's in Athens, Georgia. I see it every single day. And every single day I see tents just into the woods where I didn't see it the other day, the day before. Now, some of that's they're getting moved around. They're getting pushed out of certain areas. It's a sad situation, but it's increasing. We're seeing, seeing them in places that do not have public transportation. Now, when you start seeing them running, walking around where you don't have public transportation, you know it's for real, for real. And you're going to see more of that. I'm already, we're already seeing it. Can you imagine what that's going to look like? Uh, maybe just in a week or so. It's coming up, folks. It's coming. What can we do to prepare? Like I said yesterday, I mean, I, you know, I like the comment from yesterday from, I believe it was Kathleen. Kathleen said, you know, build fences around your property, uh, have a lot of thorny bushes and shrubbery, a hedgerow. I mean, I, you know, we can fortify our property, our homes the best we can, the best we're able. I mean, fencing is good, but uh, yeah, a hedge, a good hedge, hedgerow. Uh, maybe a, a castle wall, a moat, build a moat around it, put some alligators in it. I'm just kidding that. I'm just kidding on that. But, um, but I think that you see the, my point though, I mean, it's be a hard target. In other words, and I'm not saying from a humanitarian, I'm saying from the, the point of deflecting crime, the ones who, who are, are intent on doing crime, uh, the ones who are intent on causing you harm and robbing, okay, breaking in. You want to be a hard target. You want your place to look like it's not really worth it. I'm going to go to go somewhere else where it's an easier target, in other words. You know, so be thinking about that. Walk around your your neighborhood, walk around your home from the outside in and look at it and just walk around it. Walk all the way around it, 360. And, and just look at it from different perspectives. And what can you do, even if it's just something small, more lighting, solar lighting. Beware of the dog signs, even if you don't have a dog. Uh, you know, just some, some small things like that even can help. I'm just kind of throwing things out there, things I've been thinking about. I have a terrific, share your thoughts, on this. share your thoughts on what you're doing. Maybe. I have a terrific passage to share this is from, what is this from? This is from the book of Luke, the book of Luke chapter 12. This is uh, verses 54 through 56 from the words of Jesus. He also says, he also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the West, you say at once a shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the South wind blowing, you say, well, there will be scorching heat and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? So Jesus rebukes a crowd here, neglecting to see the spiritual signs, the spirit of the age, the present time. Notice he says the present time has that foresight, of course, uh, and, and it just, that rung, that rung a bell. This was spoken in our church highlighted in our church Sunday, yesterday. And, uh, you know, it does hit hard. It does make you think. And, uh, and I have to wonder, you know, I mean, are we starting to approach, are we approaching the last days? Are we? You know, share your thoughts on that. The more time goes on, I, I, I tend to agree that we may be. Okay. Okay. I will end it there. Let's stay aware, be safe.
God bless you. I'll see you soon.